While the House Oversight Committee released a report concluding that President Biden, quote, committed impeachable, impeachable offenses. I did not say that impeachably, unimpeachably. He did it. We know he did it. We've been covering all the things, all of the evidence that's been uncovered by this report as it's been slowly coming out in a drip. But now we have it in one big report and we're going to show it to you. But here's the thing. Okay. We know he used his influence and made a ton of money. What do we do about it now? Is it worth our time, given that the house is on fire? Is it worth our time? So I want to put this question to you as a thought experiment, because we have to decide. Recall that President Trump was impeached one week before he left office. Where did that get us? What did we get for it? I think we can all agree that got us nowhere. Nothing. It gave Democrats a talking point, and that's about it. So if Joe Biden is did in fact enrich himself, which we know he did, and his family through his political career, should we want an impeachment given that he is old and senile and powerless? Do we want this? There are two valid arguments here. Number one, no one is above the law. He used the American people to make his family rich, made decisions that were not in our best interest, but in his best interest. He sold us down the river. We will never really have justice for that because it's done. He already did it. He has the money. He made those political decisions. So, but if we don't prosecute him, how do we deter other people from doing this in the future? Then again, you can argue it's a humongous waste of time, taxpayer money. Uh, he's leaving office. Democrats will never see this evidence. In fact, they will spend their time trying not to see it. It will go nowhere. It will frustrate the heck out of all of us. So should we just leave it? What do you think? Do we take it and run or do we leave it? What do you think, Clayton? Um, no, I mean, as someone in the chat here just on Rumble, CH17 says he's too senile to stand trial. Case closed. I mean, look, I don't care if he's too senile. I don't care if he's too old. It doesn't matter. You know, they try to do this with mafia bosses, right? right. Where they wheel them into courtroom. They're like, he's, look at, he's clearly, he's got Alzheimer's. He can't, right. he doesn't, he's wearing a robe. He's so old. I don't care because I think it sets the precedent for future presidents to know that you cannot do these things. Yeah. And members of Congress for crying out loud. They that still you can't try Nazis in their 90s. Yeah. Or, or in Canada, they applaud them. They give them standing ovations right. in Canada. Not but, they, they. <laughs> right. But they seek these people around the world. They'll go to Argentina to find Nazis and bring them to bring them to account. Right. Um, you're, you hold the highest office in the land or the second highest office in the land as vice president, and you're enriching you and your family off of American tax dollars and you're lying about it and you're and this is absolute corruption and he should be brought to he should be brought to justice for it. OK, well, let's take a look at the evidence and then see if you can come down on one side or the other, because the argument is very strong. The country is already too partisan. We don't have time for this. We're funding foreign wars. The economy is crap. Can we even afford to do this? Is it a distraction from the things that need to happen going forward to make the place that we live in better for our children? Will it make it better for our children? So let's take a look. Here is the report. Uh, it is based on a year of evidence gathering that started in 2023. The committee has seen checks, loan documents. They've spoken to whistleblowers. It is dense. Again, you should seek it out and look for yourself. Here is specifically what they found. This is a summary. They found that he did use his position to make money. A lot of it since he was vice president. I would suspect that did not start during his vice presidency, but that's as far back as they looked. They say that his family was using his influence to make money and that it is, quote, inconceivable that President Biden did not understand that he was taking part in an effort to enrich his family by abusing his office of public trust. They say that the Biden family has made sophisticated efforts to conceal all of this by using LLCs, intermediaries, smaller transaction. They also say he concealed evidence he removed evidence to and documents specifically if we could go to the next one uh, he removed evidence to his personal residences and he showed things to his ghostwriter who did not have clearance and he had the White House lie for him about this in fact they claim and I don't know if this is true that the president could be impeached based on just the fact that the Biden administration lied for him, whether he knew about it or not. From this slide, they say the House need not show that the president directly ordered his subordinates to 
obstruct an investigation. In certain circumstances, the president may be impeached for the acts, actions of subordinate officials, and they base this on the Nixon impeachment. So that's interesting. Again, I can't comment on whether or not that's true. I'm not a lawyer, but interesting, right? Because the Biden administration is so chock full of liars and obstructors that we could hold the president accountable for that. They also claim that a lot of this money was marked as loans, but never paid back over $8 million in loans, but they couldn't find the receipts for any re repayment. So they think that could have been gifts. Duke Raul, Duke Raul in our chat says, ignorance of the law is no excuse. Yeah, you can like, oh, I'm just ignorant of this law. I didn't know that I couldn't do this. That's you can't, no, oh, the president <laughs> that's no doesn't excuse. know the law? That's no excuse He has a, le a law degree. In that, so yeah, no, I don't think we can say that he was, that he couldn't have understood or he didn't know any better. Right. Um, okay, where were we? Bribes. Yeah loans they had loans with no receipts so they're thinking those were probably not loans they were marked as loans now recall that president trump was impeached by only one chamber of congress for asking ukrainian president Zelensky for a favor that favor word it all hinged on that right which not ironically was about this very corruption in right. this report president trump did not get anything for that favor not he didn't get the investigation that he wanted he didn't get money the mere asking the mere act of asking is what put him in that hot water president biden however received actual money from foreign actors and enrichment and so did his family they peddled what the committee brands as the Biden brand, that's what they called it. They noted that they knew the brand was Joe Biden and everyone in his inner circle could peddle it and they could use it, you know, dinners, golf course, over the phone. Hey, you know, um, this. a lot of this came from Devin Archer. The Bidens, they say, didn't have a golf course. They didn't have property. They don't have a clothing line or a media business. They just sold their influence as consultants without being lobbyists. And the committee has traced wires from foreign sources to Hunter Biden with Joe Biden's home address and money from the Biden's family transaction with this Chinese conglomerate. We've seen this. We've seen it in stock in Excel spreadsheets. We saw it when Hunter Biden's assistant was asking like, hey, pay this back here. Joe's going to pay this. We've seen the evidence. We've looked at it over the last two years. And indeed, it was very lucrative for them to the tune of $35 million is what they've seen. Biden family members receiving over $18 million from foreign sources and their schemes $27 million totaling 35 is what the committee has seen that they could uncover. So what do they want? Well, here's what the committee rec recommends is that the Constitution's remedy for a president's flagrant abuse of office is clear impeachment by the House of Representatives and removal by the Senate. Despite the cheapening of the impeachment power by Democrats in recent years, they say, the House's decision to pursue articles of impeachment must not be made lightly. As such, this report endeavors to present the evidence gathered to date so that all members of the House may assess the extent of President Biden's corruption. So how much of that is still going on, given nobody's gonna buy the Biden brand, he has no power anymore presumably, right? We don't know who's running the White House. We don't know what that would get anybody to buy into the Biden brand. It seems to me their payday is over. But now that you see at least a summary of this evidence and where to find it for yourself, what do you think? Should we fall? Should we impeach this old senile guy? What do we get for it? Let me know what you think. Where do you come down on this? You know what's you know, what's interesting is I was diving into the Clinton Foundation data over the past couple of days. And what it, what was interesting is you want to know how and why it was so important for Hillary Clinton to try to keep being in the limelight. Yeah. Because she was a, her husband, of course, was able to bring in hundreds of thousands of dollars per speech using the Clinton Foundation as yeah. a, basically a large money laundering scheme to launder money into so the Clinton world. Right. Funnel money into the Clintons and curry favor, get get favors in return and using the Clinton Foundation as a way to like funnel all of this money. But then as soon as Hillary lost and she was out of the mix, suddenly all of those Clinton Foundation bookings, yeah. they plummeted down to like, it was like about 70%. So the brand of the Clintons is all about corruption. 
It's all about people being able to buy and curry favor with them by booking Bill Clinton for large speeches. And, oh, we'll, we'll pay him $300,000 because we know that that money will make its way back and we'll get, we'll get you know, um, favorable responses inside the Secretary of State's office. Sure. I mean, I don't see any harm in, say, Unilever hires one of the Clintons to speak and they want to hear about leadership or whatever. But the problem is that what does that then do if to the people who are voting on certain business legislations. It's even worse when it's foreign actors, clearly. So, yeah, and and who is promising access to whom? There are clear rules about this. Uh, Congressional members have to follow certain clear rules. It's all about access. That's the whole reason that they, you know, Burisma hires, you know, Hunter Biden for $50,000 a month. It's not because they wanted his business acumen. Right. You know, they, all they wanted to do was curry favor with Joe Biden and get favors. That's yes. it. And this massive money laundering scheme. And that's exactly that's exactly the case. You know, Thomas Massey, friend of the show, Congressman Thomas Massey, who was one of the bravest members of Congress, um, he on Twitter today, he's calling for that it should be mandatory that if you have dual citizenship, if you're a member of Congress and you have dual citizenship, that you should renounce the citizenship of the other country if you become a member of Congress. Or, he says, at the very least, you have to disclose that, oh, you are a dual citizen of Israel. And not then vote on issues related to your dual citizenship. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I mean, that, talk about it. That's uh, too reasonable. He will not get his way. 